Today we're going to describe some extremely important phenomenon and as I mentioned in the previous lecture, we're going to talk about one of the most difficult, it's not the most difficult but the least understood concept in physics, it's the least well explained concept in physics and that is the concept of entropy. And with entropy comes the second law of thermodynamics. Now you might be wondering, why am I not talking about the first law of thermodynamics? Why am I jumping on to the second law of thermodynamics? Well, the first law of thermodynamics, I just mentioned in passing, it's just the law of conservation of energy. So I'm not going to spend any time, besides a few minutes perhaps, on the first law of thermodynamics, but I would like today to highlight these two related concepts of entropy and the second law of thermodynamics and these are signature concepts in physics which means that these concepts describe a wide variety of everyday phenomena right from global warming, climate change, refrigeration, how you heat or warm your homes all the way up to how stars are formed, pn junctions are formed, how diffusion takes place how do we use reverse osmosis to clean water, etc. So these are extremely vital concepts. These concepts are at the heart of biochemical processes, biological processes, metabolism. And at the same time, they describe semiconductor processes. So these are extremely vital concepts. And what my purpose today is to simplify these concepts so that with the basics that you built so far in modern physics and quantum mechanics, you are able to explain what entropy is and the second law of thermodynamics is. And in the previous lecture, I started off by modeling an Einsteinian solid or a statistical solid. And I mentioned that an atom inside the solid can be decomposed, modeled as three vibrational springs. Three springs oscillating in three orthogonal directions, in an x direction, in a y direction, in a z direction. So each atom inside the solid can be modeled as three oscillators. One along x, one along y, and one along z, and we, each one of them is independent. So there are three degrees of freedom for a solid, for an atom inside a solid. And you're not taking into account the rotational motion or the translational motion of the solid. In an atom, the solid, in a solid, the atoms don't show translational motion. They are fixed to their neighbors, but they can vibrate. That's at the most what they could do. So each one of these degrees of freedom presents a harmonic oscillator. And each one of these energies is quantized. So the solid itself can be modeled as three, one atom, one atom of a solid can be modeled as three harmonic oscillators. One along x, one along y, one along z, and the energy levels indeed they are quantized, like all quantum systems. It's a bound system. This atom cannot move. It's not a free atom. It's a bound system. So it's a confined system, and the energy levels are quantized. And these energy levels correspond not to the electrons inside the inside the atom. These correspond to the vibrational modes of the atom of the solid. So the vibration of these solid atoms is quantized. <clears throat> and so on. So these three harmonic oscillators represent one atom inside a solid, in a three-dimensional solid. Now the question is that this atom has some energy. So I give energy to the atom. Now this energy has to be quantized because these levels are quantized. Now I can give any amount of energy, that depends on the temperature of the solid. But suppose I give four units of energy. I say that I provide the system with, which comprises just one atom, I give it four quantums of energy. 
or my q equals 4. What this really means is that the system has an energy 4 h bar omega, where h bar omega is the spacing between any two levels. Okay, this is what it means. Four quantums of energy are given to the system. I can have zero quantum, one, two, three, four, five, six, up to million, trillion, zillion quantums of energy inside the single atom. But I cannot have non-integral units of energy because the energy is quantized. So I give four quantums of energy to this solid atom, one atom. Now I would like to see how is this energy distributed. Whether the energy lies in the x direction, the y direction, z direction. So I can have the atom oscillating in the x direction with four units of energy and not oscillating at all in the y or the z direction. I can have it oscillating with four unit quantums in the y direction and not oscillating at all in the x and z directions. I can have more, more democratic distributions of the quantum of energy as well. Right? So what I could have, for example, is I could have different scenarios. So one scenario is that all the four quantums of energy lie inside this oscillator. Zero, plus this is one unit of energy, two, three, four. So now I'm drawing this yellow circle on the fourth level, on n equals 4 inside this oscillator. This is n equals 1, the ground state energy, which is almost 0, not really 0, but almost 0, but the minimum energy. So I'm draw I've drawn a circle in the fourth level here, which means that this oscillator has four quantums of energy. This is what this yellow circle means. It means that the fourth level is populated inside this oscillator. Now this vibration can also be modeled as some kind of particles that are existing inside these levels. These are not electrons, but these are other kinds of particles that we might call phonons. Because we're talking about the vibrational modes. So we can think as that there is a phonon inside the fourth quantum level. Or you don't need to think about phonons, you can just imagine that the oscillate, this oscillator in the x direction has four quantums of energy. And this oscillator has zero quantums of energy. So this ground state is populated. And this oscillator has zero quantums of energy. So this distribution of energies inside the three oscillators corresponding to a single atom gives you four quantums of energy. Okay? So I can represent this distribution as four comma zero comma zero. So four quantums in the first oscillator, zero here and zero here. Zero actually means that the zero state is populated. Now, this is a quantum state. Agreed? So I can put this in a ket. This ket tells me that the first oscillator has four quantums, the second oscillator has zero quantums, and the third oscillator has zero quantums. All right, so four quantums of energy, this, this is one possibility of distributing the energy of four quantums in Side the one atom. Agree? Yes. One, two, three, four. This is the fourth level. This energy is four h bar omega. This is energy is h bar omega. That's the minimum energy. You cannot have zero. Yes. Uh, so if I have an oscillator and the ground state is pop, just consider one oscillator, the ground state is populated, populated. I call it zero quantum of energy. One, two, three, four. So this is one, 
two, three, four quantums of energy. Okay. One, two, three. All right. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Does this make sense? Yes. So, what are photons? You have electromagnetic radiation. This electromagnetic radiation comes off in bunches of energy, in capsules of energy. We call each capsule of energy a photon. Likewise, if you have a solid which comprises atoms, then the vibration of the atom is quantized. Suppose I have a one-dimensional solid, a single atom inside a solid. This is modeled as just one chain, just one atom connected with a spring to a solid support. This is oscillating. All right. So this system has some energy. The energy of this system is, if this is my x, which is my deviation from equilibrium, the energy of this system is half k x squared plus half m v squared. This is the energy of this oscillator. But, but this energy has to be quantized because this is a bound system. If this were a quantum particle like an atom inside a solid, its energy has to be quantized like all other well-behaved quantum systems. So what I can model this energy. Now if I would, this is the potential energy by the way. This is the potential energy, this is the kinetic energy, and this is the total energy of the system. Now if I want to solve the Schrodinger equation for this system, I would like to know what the potential energy landscape looks like because the Schrodinger equation has a term for the potential energy. Now if I look at this potential energy and I were to plot this potential energy versus x, what kind of graph would I get? If this is my x, this is my vx, the graph that I would obtain would look like a bowel, a parabola. This is how the potential energy changes. Now if I put this potential energy, this form of the potential energy, the Schrodinger equation, and solve it, I will get quantized energy levels. Okay, equally spaced. We've seen that already. Now, these represent the energy. This is the lowest energy. I say that this is energy zero. It's not precisely zero, it's half h bar omega. But nevertheless, this is the minimum energy. If this system has zero energy, it means that this state is populated. OK, I have some quantum, some particle, some hypothetical fictitious particle that lives in this state. If this harmonic oscillator has three quantums of energy, three units of energy, then I would have a population here which means that this state is going to be populated and this state, the first state, will be empty. This configuration shows that this harmonic oscillator has three quantums of energy. Now I'm showing the, re I'm showing the occupation of these states, but some hypothetical particles are actually occupying these states. These particles are called phonons. All right? So phonons are quantized units of energy of vibrational motion. If this harmonic oscillator has a bigger energy, which means, now you also remember that the total energy of a pendulum or a spring attached to a mass is given by half k x naught squared, where x naught is the amplitude of the system. This you learn from mechanics. Now, if the energy of the system goes up, the amplitude squared is going up, you're putting more and more phonons into the system. You are exciting this harmonic oscillator to higher and higher levels. A higher level state will be populated. But populated with what? These are not electrons, these are not photons, these are these hypothetical particles that we call phonons. Okay? 
Now, I would like to distribute four quantums of energy into one atom. This is one possibility. And this representation is called the number occupation representation is showing me what this configuration stands for. But is this the only possible way of distributing four quantums of energy? I can have many more. How many? Eight. Four factorial, which is what? 24. How many possibilities of storing energy? This was a homework problem as well, by the way. Let's try to figure out these configurations. How many? So I have one possibility is zero four zero. This is the second possibility, that only this harmonic oscillator has four phonons or four quantums of energy. Excuse me, mobile phones off. What's your name? So this is the second possibility. Now I'm preserving the order. This zero corresponds to the zero state occupied, zero phonons here, or zero quantums here, four quantums here, and zero quantums here. So I'm preserving the order in writing this quantum state. So this is the second possibility. The second configuration. I can have more. Zero here, zero here, four here, zero, zero, four. But that doesn't exhaust the possibilities. I can have more possibilities. For example, I could have the following. Now I always have four quantums and I am looking at the possible ways of distributing this energy into the harmonic oscillators. I could have three here, one here, and zero here. Okay, so this corresponds to three, one, zero. In fact, I can write down all the possibilities for one atom for three oscillators. This is simple. How many possibilities exist? 15. 15 possibilities exist. Could you write down those 15 possibilities? Could you write down the quantum states for those 15 possibilities? You don't need to draw them over and over again, just write down the 15 gets, the 15 quantum states that are possible. You want to keep the total energy constant at four quantums, four phonons. The 
कितना है पंद्रह और राइट सो लेट मी राइट डाउन दिस फिफ्टीन पॉसिबिलिटीज आई हैव फोर जीरो 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 फोर जीरो 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 फोर Now, since we've learned quantum mechanics, we're using this calculation. We are familiar with it, so this is good. I can have three one zero, three zero one. I could have one three zero, one zero three. I could have zero one three, zero three. One. I could also have two, two, zero, two, zero, two, zero, two, two. I could also have two, one, 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 two, one. One, one, two. That's all. Fifteen possibilities. Now I have four quantums of energy, one atom, and I'm just looking at the vibrational degree of freedom. Just the vibrational degree of freedom. So this atom is modeled by three independent harmonic oscillators, and I'm trying to partition this energy. Look at the word I'm using. I'm trying to partition or distribute or spread out this energy into these 15 quantum states, and each one of these configurations or states is called a microstate. Microstate. Okay, and what my goal is is. that i have a state which is one atom possessing four quantum of energy this statement is called a macro state so the macro state is the macro state is look at the word macro macro means something that is oblivious that doesn't see these configurations i'm just putting in four quantum of energy into the atom this is my macro state so 4 q equals 4 is my macro state and the number of micro states which are the quantum states each one of them has q equals 4 the number of my micro states in This macro state is fifteen. All right. Now, this is generally the number of micro states is generally represented by the symbol omega. So the number of micro states in this macro state, which I have defined, q equals four, is fifteen. Now the, there's a principle which is a basic premise of statistical mechanics, and that is called the equipartition of energy. Now each of these fifteen states have the same energy. The energy of this state is the same as the energy of this state. It's the same as any other micro state. So all the 15 micro states have the same energy. What do we call such quantum states which have different wave functions, different quantum states, but the same energy? These are called degenerate states. So all 15 of these micro states are all are degenerate. All of them have the same energy. They might be different looking quantum states. Different wave functions. If you would like to write in the wave functions, but all 15 of them have the same energy, so they are degenerate quantum states. Now I like it because we've already learned quantum mechanics, and it's easier to describe statistical mechanics in the light of quantum mechanics. 
All right. Now the equipartition of, of energy really means that all these states are degenerate. They have the same energy. So if I give you the macro state, then all 15 of these micro states have the same probability. Each one. So you can't measure the system. I mean, if I give you the statement that my atom exists with Q equals 4, then all 15 of these microstates will exist with the same probability. Because all of them have the same energy. There is no preference of one microstate over the other. This means that if I were to make a plot between the microstates and the probability of each microstate, so I have 15 possibilities, A, O, T, Char, An, Each one of these is going to have the same probability. This is the equipartition of energy. So if I give some energy to this atom, there's an equal likelihood that any one of these 15 microstates can, can exist. So, if I give you the system, it's going to be an equal mixture, an equal mixture. It's not a superposition, it's an equal mixture of these 15 microstates because all 15 of these are degenerate. There's no preference of one microstate over the other. Yes? Yes, but this is the most probable. This is the most democratic distribution of energy. But these energies are just the same, so you can't choose one over the other. They're just the same states as far as the energy is concerned. These are degenerate. All right. Yes. Yes, it, it's, it's keep, it keeps on oscillating between these states. But we can't tell because we can't measure. If we were to measure a microstate, we'll have an equal probability that any one of these shows up. OK, but it's not a superposition. So I'm not going to get into the measurement problem here. All right. Now with this basic building block, let's do something more complicated. Remember that we're dealing with a single atom. <coughs> a single atom is the mirage. Sorry, it's not the mirage. It's the zenith of quantum mechanics. I mean, you're just dealing with a single atom. But in real life, you have more complicated systems. You have solids. You have comprising of, say, 10 and 20 atoms, lots of atoms. So we would like to take this step from the quantum realm to the macroscopic, to bigger objects. But let's do an intermediate process in, in, on our roof. Let's look at two atoms. So we looked at one atom, how energy is distributed within the microstates of one atom, given a particular macrostate. Now let's look at two atoms. The same kind of description applies. Two atoms mean six harmonic oscillators coming together. Atom A, atom B. Quantized levels. An isotropic atom, so the x oscillator, the y oscillator, z oscillator, all three are the same. And identical atoms. Suppose it's diamond. All of them are carbon atoms. Identical. So two atoms. This is atom A, atom B. Now I have a macro state given by Q equals 4. So I have four phonons or four quantums of energy that are to be distributed within the two atoms. So that the total energy of the system remains four units. Now I can have all the energy here or I can have all the energy here. Which means that I can have QA quantums inside atom A, and I can have QB quantums inside atom B. 
and QB is equal to 4 minus QA. So I can have distribution of, act of energy across the two atoms as well. And once the energy inside in each atom is defined, I can distribute that energy within the microstates inside an atom. Okay? So now let's make a table. Slightly more complicated. Here we didn't need any table of any kind. So let's make a table here to simplify the discussion. And this is important. This is the only thing that you need to understand to uh, need to understand for the second law. So I make a table. Q is given by 4. QA quantums go into atom A. QB quantums go into atom B. So I can have four quantums in A and zero in B. I can have three quantums in A and one in B, two in each, one here, three here. I can have zero here and four here. So this is one macro state, another macro state. I have these five different macro states, which represent different distributions of energy within the two atoms. Now once four quantums exist in atom A, those four quantums can redistribute themselves in a number of ways within the micro states inside atom A. So I make a column for omega A, which is the number of micro states in A, and I make a column for the number of microstates in B. Now, if there are four quantums in A, and I would like to distribute these four quantums within one atom, three oscillators, I already know that there are 15 microstates that are possible. So I put 15 here. What should I put here? Zero or one? One. There's only one possibility of having zero quantums in an atom, and that possibility is that the ground state is populated with each one of these oscillators. This is the only possibility that one atom harbors one quantum of energy. Oh, sorry, zero quantum of energy. The ground state is to be populated. So this is one. Now, if there are three quantums in A, suppose there is one quantum in B, just one quantum in B. How many possibility? What is omega B? Three. Could you compute what this has to be? This has to be ten. Three quantums of energy which means that the possibilities are 300, 0, 0, 3, 0, 0, 0, 3, 2, 1, 0, 2, 0, 1, 2, 1, 2, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 1, 2, 0, 2, 1. And what's the last one? It's 1, 1, 1. So these are 10 possibilities of distributing three quantums of energy in one atom. So I put 10 here. What do we get here? 6 and 6. I hope you can explicitly write down the microstates. Now this is just the reverse of this. This is 3, this is 10. This is 1, this is 15. Now the nice thing is, now let's make a plot. What I would like to make a plot of is I have Q here 
and Q A here. And if I have omega A here, for Q A 0, for Q A 4, I have 15. Let's go this way. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. When Q A is 0 here, my omega A is 1. Then I have 3. Then I have 6. Then I have 10. Then I have 15. So for QA, I'm plotting energy here. Four con 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4 quantums of energy only in A. I'm only plotting with respect to QA. And I'm plotting the number of microstates. So as the energy in this atom goes up, as it acquires more energy, it requires, here it requires lines, lines share of the energy. All of the energy is actually in atom A. And the number of microstates, the number of accessible microstates, degenerate states goes up. This will also be a plot. If I were to make a plot between QB and omega B, it's going to be an identical plot. Okay, totally identical plot. If I were to make a plot between <coughs> omega B and QA, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, the plot is actually going to look like this. Okay, this is plot between omega b and qa. So on this axis I can plot the energy and on this axis I can plot the number of accessible microstates. Now the point is that if I have two atoms, that now comes the central question. If I have, if you understand the question, you understand the answer. If I have two atoms, and energy is distributed across the two atoms. Which of these macro states, macro states, is more likely? This means I need to find out the number of micro states in each macro state. This is one macro state, another, another, there are five macro states. One macro state is that A takes up all the energy. The other macro state is that A takes up 75% of the energy. Then I have 50-50 sharing of the energy. Then I have 25% in A and 75% in B. And then the last possible macro state is that all the energy is actually in B. So all of these are possible macro states. Now I need to find out the number of micro states, the accessible micro states in each macro state. For that purpose, what do I need to do? I need to multiply omega A with omega B. And if I perform this multiplication, I get 15, 30, 36, 30, 50. And I total these, I get 126. So in all five of these macro states, there are 126 configurations. All 126 of these configurations have the same total energy of four quantums. But then each macro state has a different number of micro states available in each. All right. So now if I were to make a plot of the following, QA versus the probability of omega A, omega B. Now the probability is simply given by the number of micro 
the number of accessible degrees of freedom, the number of levels that are available, the number of different quantum states in which my energy can be distributed, the number, the freedom that I have, how much energy can spread out, divided by the total number of possibilities. So the probability that this macro state will, of this macro state will be 15 over 126. So if I plot this, so this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, QA, remember this is QA that I'm talking about. And then I have the first row, all the energy, 4 Q, QA is 4, which means all the energy is in the first atom. This omega A omega B is 15, the probability is 15 over 126, so I have 15 here. This is now 30, this is now 36, 30, so this is a probability distribution. Now which of these macro states is more probable, is the most probable? This equal distribution of energy between the two atoms is the most probable. And this is such an important statement that I would like to write, down, write it down. The most <coughs> probable macro state is the one which harbors <coughs> or includes or is made up of the most, the highest number of microstates. So one statement, the other statement is, even though, or this is just a clause with this statement, even though all microstates are equally probable. Or in other words, all microstates are equally probable, all macrostates are possible, all macrostates are possible. Possible. All microstates are equally probable. Now look how I am using the words possible and probable. So English is important. Even though it's not central, but English or language may facilitate science. All the macro states are possible. There's no denying the fact that this macro state has a finite probability of 15 over 126. This is the probability here. This is 30 over 126. This is 36 over 126 and so on. So all of these macro states have some non-zero finite probability. All of them are possible. All of them are possible, but the highest, which also means that all of them are probable. So all of them are possible, so all of them are probable. But the highest probability the most probable or the modal macro state is the one which has the highest number of micro states available. The more the micro the number higher the number of micro states, the energy would have since all the micro states are equally probable, the energy would like to go into the macro state where the highest number of macro states, micro states exist. So this is the most probable macro state. Now the nice thing in this graph is that it describes, as I'm going to describe in a minute, this second of thermodynamics, there is one macro state that is most probable. All of them are possible, but one macro state that is the most probable. But 
its probability slightly edges only a little bit over and above the other macro states. That's because we have only we're talking about only two atoms. Okay? So if I have two atoms and they would like to share some energy, they would like to share them equally. But it's possible that one of the atoms has 75% of the energy and the other one has 25%. One has uh, or, so all, all of these states are possible. This is 50-50 sharing. Then you have 25-75% sharing. Okay? This is that all, only atom 1, only atom B has all the energy. This is when atom A has all the energy. So this, this is also possible if you're talking about single atom. This is a finite probability, 15 over 126. This is a little, uh, this is about 10%. So there's a 10% probability that any one atom shares all of the energy. So this is a nice smooth probability distribution curve in which, which, is, which reflect the democratic distribution of energy because all the microstates are equally probable. Since all the microstates are equally probable, the number of mic accessible microstates is different in each macrostate. All the microstates, all 126 of these microstates are equally probable. This is the equipartition of energy. But a microstate may have differing number of accessible microstates. So higher the more room the energy has to go, the energy will go there. So if there's more room available, available, the energy would tend to go wherever more room is available. It would like to spread out. If accessible microstates are available, the energy would like to spread out. And this is the origin of the S in spreading. Energy would like to spread out. This is entropy. So the entropy would like to go up. I'm going to describe this in more detail. But now let's look at a more complicated example. In our real life, we don't have one atom coming in contact with another atom. Suppose I have nanoparticles. Still, I'm not in the macroscopic realm. I'm in the small realm. I have a nanoparticle. 100 atoms. Na is, Na is 100 atoms times 3 oscillators. And this comes in contact now with another object, which is smaller in size. Half the size. Same identity, but half the size. So now I have a solid B, which comprises 50 atoms, and there are 150 oscillators in it. Now I have some energy, which is to be distributed between these two nanoparticles. And the total energy now that I'm talking about is, say, 100. I have 100 quantums of energy that are to be distributed with this nanoparticle. Still, it's a very small number. It has nothing to do with our real life because our real life deals with millions and billions and trillions of atoms. These are really small numbers. So this is something that's going to happen at the mesoscopic or nanoscopic world. Now I have 100 quantums of energy to be distributed between these two solid systems. Then they come in contact with one another. And I assume that the interaction with the environment is switched off. So there's no interact exchange of energy with the environment. So this is what is called a closed system. Okay, so they can exchange energy amongst themselves, but overall, they cannot exchange energy with the environment. Now I would like to make a table again. QA, QB, Omega A, Omega B. And then finally, Omega A, Omega B, which is the total number of microstates in a macrostate. Now I can have different possibilities. 100 here, 0 here, 1 here, uh, 99 here, 1 here, 98, 2, 3, 97, 2, 98, 1, 99, 0, 100. So I have these 101 rows inside this table. Now I would like to find out these omega A's and omega B's. Now the question is, I have 100 quantums of energy and I would like to distribute them inside 
300 oscillators. Now, if I ask you to do this by hand, you'll probably spend a lifetime of the universe doing it. It's going to be such a lengthy procedure. So I would like to have a formula that comes from probability theory, which actually helps me determine the number of microscopes. Okay, and I'm, I guess you are studying probability theory right now? You've already studied? You have studied? Come on. But have you studied permutations and combinations? Does everyone know what a factorial is? Everyone. Anyone who doesn't know what a factorial is? Without being shy, please, you can just raise your hand. You just raise your hand like this. Everyone knows what a factorial is. All right. So let me just write down a formula. Omega, the number of accessible microstates with n oscillators and q quantums of energy to be distributed inside those n oscillators is given by n plus q minus 1 factorial divided by q factorial divided by n minus 1 factorial. This is also the same as if you are familiar with the notation of combinations and permutation, this is also equal to n plus q minus 1 c q. So if you are familiar with this notation, you don't have to remember this. But you need to know about this formula. I'll provide this formula in the exam as well, but you need to know this. So this is, I have n plus q minus 1 different possibilities, and I'm putting q units in those n plus q minus 1 different possibilities. This is the formula that comes out for the number of microstates. Now, if I were to use this formula, I can compute this column here. For example, this object here, this object here, in the first row, this will become my n is 300. So I have 300 plus 100, 400 minus 1, 399 factorial divided by q is 100, 100 factorial, n minus 1, which is 299. So now I need to compute this number extremely large, an astronomically large number. So large, maybe it's the answer that you get is bigger than the number of atoms in the universe. It's such a large number. So I can't do it on hand. I need to use a computer for this. So I can construct this table here. I would like to construct this table. Okay? So I'm going to do that after a 10 minute break and we're going to find out how energy is distributed and what is the most probable energy distribution when I have a situation of this kind. Let's take a 10 minute break.